Welcome to a new class on construction equipment and today we're going to be talking about a new piece of equipment that we have not been exposed to before which is a grader. Graders are used in heavy construction and primarily in road construction so we're going to look today at what a grader looks like, what are the primary uses of that uh, grader, what are the different methods for calculating its uh, performance or its productivity and then we're going to deal with the equations and so on and so forth. So again what are these uh, graders used primarily for? For finishing, for finish grading, and fine grading. They shape materials to the required line and grade specified in the contract documents. And they follow behind excavation or compaction of embankments. Here's the picture of the grader. It shows here at the side a, uh, the blade elevated a little bit over uh, the surface of the ground. And it shows that the blade here is tilted sideways we're going to see it in different positions in a moment when we look at different pictures and a couple of video clips so the greater usage again is for stripping light vegetation with the blade it can remove light vegetation from its roots for rough grading and for finished grading grading for shaping or different embankments for bank sloping for ditching or excavating very uh, shallow ditches relatively speaking and mixing, spreading, and road maintenance, etc. And they can work on slopes as steep as 3 to 1. So not only on flat surfaces, but they can work on sloped surfaces as well. Uh, here's again the, uh, the uh, mechanism that operates the blade inclination and the blade rotation. And here it shows that that uh, grader can move either straight with the blade either uh, perpendicular to the direction of operation or tilted at a certain angle which is going to affect the width of shaping the soil or it can move in an articulated way as we're going to see in the next couple of, of pictures or it can move in what's called a crab motion with the front wheel still parallel to the rear wheels but at a different uh, axis here it shows again the two wheels, the two front wheels of uh, the uh, the grader working on two different uh, planes or two different levels. So this is part of the versatility and the flexibility of that grader. Here it shows the blade working perpendicularly in a perpendicular way, so vertically, and here it shows it horizontally as well. Now we're going to look at a couple of video clips that explain or that show a grader in operation. So here, for example, we have the grader moving forward with the blade lowered to a certain level. And here we have the blade tilted uh, sideways to affect the width of, uh, of the operation. Here it, you can see that it's dragging soil in front of it and leveling the plane behind it. And it's mostly used to shape these different parts of the profile of a highway. For example, for the uh, ditches, for the back slope, for the fore slope, for the crown and the shoulders and so on. This is basically what the grader is going to be used for to shape all of these different features. Here we're going to look at another uh, uh, use for the grader. Now it's used to excavate that ditch at the side of the highway. So we have the blade in a perpendicular uh, position or in a vertical position and as you can see it's pushing soil in front of it of course there's going to be a relatively higher resistance here because it's uh, concentrated on the very narrow area of the blade So the mechanism that opera operates the blade here, you can see it in a vertical way. You get the idea. Now when, to, when we want to calculate the production of the grader, we have to look at which mode of operation are we going to use it for. So grading operations in most of the cases they tend to be linear like in highway construction 
where you have a limited width but a long stretch of the road. Or it sometimes, sometimes it can be rectangular. So for example, for the uh, shopping mall or a bank or a school or a parking garage or something like that, we have uh, a rectangular area. So when we're talking about linear operation, the grader moves in one direction with the blade down and then turns around and grades in the other direction also with the, with the blade down. So forward and then turns with a very narrow arc and then moves forward again uh, uh, to level the ground, uh, the, the, the soil in front of it. So the turnaround time is going to be considered very insignificant because it's a very short period of time. The other way of operation is a rectangular, and rectangular can be divided into two different ways. So it can be either back and forth or the looping method. The back and forth, the grader moves in one direction, just like the linear, and then once it reaches the end of the stretch, it's going to lift the blade, go backwards to the starting point, move sideways, and then go for another pass uh, for that uh, area. The other way is the looping method, where the grader is moving forward until it reaches the end, lifts the blade, turns around, and then lowers the, bla the blade again and goes in the opposite direction. So it's always moving forward in this case. And it's going to be in something like a loop until we close that loop. The production is going to be measured in area measure divided by unit of time. Usually that area measure is going to be square yards and usually uni unit of time is going to be in hours. Now remember, most of the pieces of equipment that we have dealt with before, their production was usually measured in cubic yards per hour or cubic feet per hour. So it was volume per hour. In this case, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to be an area per hour. So for rough grading, it's going to be measured in square yards per hour to determine the number of graders required. Production is a function of the effective grading width, which is, again, the width of the blade perpendicular to the direction of motion of the grader, uh, the average grading speed, how fast it can move, move forward and backward, the number of passes required, how many passes are needed to level that area, and the operational efficiency, how many productive minutes per hour can we achieve? So it's 45 minutes an hour, 50 minutes an hour, etc. The effective grading width is the width of each pass the grader makes, which again is the width of the blade. It's going to be the full width of the blade only if it's perpendicular to the direction of motion, or it could be less than that if it's tilted um, and not exactly perpendicular to the direction of motion. So in linear operations, the productivity is going to be measured as V times W times OF divided by N, where V is the average grading speed moving forward. W is the effective grading width, whether it's the full width of the blade or slightly less than that if it's tilted. And OF or E, sometimes we call it E efficiency, is the operating factor. So OF or E is exactly the same divided by the number of passes required. How many passes are we going to need to level that area? So this equation works only for linear operations and not for rectangular. For rectangular operations, we have another set of equations. So for rectangular operations, rectangular operations, productivity is going to be the area graded per cycle times E, or operational efficiency, the efficiency, divided by cycle time times number of passes required. So here we have cycle time that we're seeing for the first time. We need to calculate the cycle time. How are we going to calculate that? The cycle time is a cycle time for back and forth from the time it moves forward until it comes back and it's ready for another cycle forward. So, and this is only for the rectangular method. Uh, DF is the distance the grader travels forward. DR, the distance the grader travels in reverse. VF the speed, average forward speed, and VR, the average reverse speed. So the cycle time is equal to DF over VF, distance forward divided by speed forward, plus DR over VR, distance in reverse divided by speed in reverse. Now for the looping method, it's going to be the distance the grader travels forward divided by the forward speed, average forward speed, 
and dt plus dt over vt where dt is the distance the grader travels when turning because it's always going to be driving it traveling forward so we add to the forward we're going to add the turning distance divided by the average turning speed so again this is going to be for the looping for the previous slide was for the back and forth and this one is for the looping method so we have three different methods to calculate the productivity depending on the mode of operation of the grader whether it's linear back and forth or looping let's now look at an example and see how to apply that in a problem so a contractor needs to grade a compacted fill measuring 150 feet by 360 feet we're always going to work in the longer direction so it's going to be facing the longer direction which is 360 feet the contractor plans to use a caterpillar 140 g grader to grade the fill area as the scrapers spread the fill materials we haven't talked about scrapers yet that's another lecture where we're going to be exposed to scrapers and their way of operation what is the estimated productivity in square yards per hour again remember square yards per hour the dimensions here are given in feet so we have to accommodate for that if the grader operator uses a back and forth method to grade the field so now we know that we're going to be measuring distance forward and speed forward and distance backward and speed backward with an average forward speed of 2.4 miles per hour it's going to be slower because it has the blade down and an average reverse speed of six miles per hour higher speed because in this case the blade is up we have less resistance so it can move faster assume an operational efficiency of 50 minutes per hour and that two passes are required and the effective grading width is nine feet so the blade the the uh, the, the width perpendicular to the direction of motion is nine feet so first of all we have to estimate the cycle time and the cycle time is distance over speed forward plus distance over speed backward and the distance in this case is going to be the same because it's going to be traveling the same 360 foot stretch so for one pass it's going to be 360 divided by 2.4 miles per hour but this 360 is in feet and this is in miles per hour so we have to use the modifying the modifier factor which is 88 feet per minute divided by minutes per hour to convert from uh, feet per minute to miles per hour so plus 360 divided by 6 times 88 and that's equal to 1.7 minutes moving forward plus 0.7 minutes moving backward with a total cycle time of 2.4 minutes now that we know the cycle time we can plug it in the equation so the calculated ca uh, productivity is equal to the area graded per cycle times the efficiency divided by the cycle time times the number of required passes the area graded per cycle is going to be the efficient or the effective blade width which is nine feet times the length 360 feet times 50 minutes per hour which is the efficiency or the operational factor divided by now we have to convert these feet into yards so we divide by nine which is nine square feet per square yard divided also by n which is the number of passes that are required and divided also by the cycle time which we calculated in the previous slide which is 2.4 minutes and that gives a total production of 3750 square yards per hour this is basically a very brief introduction about uh, graders I hope that you can you have seen them on construction sites or you can take some pictures or videos related to graders on construction sites well I'll see you in the next lecture related to another piece of construction equipment.